Thank you very much, Mr. President. It's nice to see you presiding. Mr. President, the decision made by the next Secretary of Health and Human Services will affect all of us, and that's why we're here. That's why we have spent uh, so much time and will continue to talk about the issues. This is not personal to an individual. This is about everyone in our country and how they're impacted by the ideas and the policies of this individual as well as the person who has nominated him. But this particular individual has a very clear record as to what he believes should happen as it relates to Medicare and Medicaid and our entire health care system. More than 100 million people rely on programs like Medicare, seniors, people with disabilities on Medicare, Medicaid, the majority of money spent through the Medicaid healthcare system goes to seniors and nursing homes. That's where the majority of dollars goes, long-term care for seniors. So Congressman Price's ideas, his proposals, the things he has pushed in the House matter because they show us what he believes should happen to Medicaid and to Medicare. We need to make sure that the next Health and Human Services Secretary will fight for the health care of families in Michigan, at least I need to be sure, that's where my vote goes, based on what's best for families in Michigan, what's best for our communities, rural communities, where the hospital, like where I grew up in Clare, was the largest employer in the community, greatly affected and impacted by what happens to Medicare and Medicaid funding. If the hospital's not there, chances are the doctors aren't there either, or the nurses. Our larger communities, where obviously our hospitals are critically important as well. And so when we look at communities and hospitals and doctors, families, children, seniors, and the broad economy, which by the way, one-sixth of the whole economy in our country is healthcare connected to health care. So who is in charge as Secretary of Health and Human Services is a big deal, which is why we have focused so much on this individual, his policies, his ideas, and his own background as well. As we've gone through the confirmation process, it's clear to me that Congressman Price's policies do not, do not have the best interests of the people I represent in Michigan at heart, which is why I will be voting no on his confirmation. I've heard from thousands of people around Michigan. I've heard from people who run our hospitals and live in the community and business people and, again, nurses and doctors with great concerns. And I've also heard from people around the country and have helped to lead a forum for people to come and speak, people who were not invited into the actual hearing for the confirmation process. I thought it was important, as did my Democratic colleagues, to have a forum where people could speak about the ideas, the bills, the policies, that Congressman Price has passed in the House of Representatives. So we heard a lot of stories, and overwhelmingly people were opposed to this nominee. One of the people who shared her story was Ann Serafin from Michigan. I was very appreciative that she came in from Michigan. Ann was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis when she was 40 years old. It resulted in functional quadriplegia, She's limited use of her right arm, no use of her left arm. She's fortunate to have strong employee benefits and to be covered until she went on Medicare at 65. By the way, this nominee thinks the age should go up. 
66 or 67, or I'm not sure how far. But Anne made it to 65. And like so many people that I know, you know, just was holding her breath to get there so she could have comprehensive quality health care that she'd paid into her whole life called Medicare. Over the course of the last few decades, the price of her prescription drugs have skyrocketed and would cost her tens of thousands of dollars a year without Medicare and Medicaid. For her, the decision about our Health and Human Services Secretary makes an enormous impact on her life. She told us, without Medicare and Medicaid, things would have been very different for my family. I don't know how I could have cared for my mom on top of managing my own care. My family would have lost our home, all of our savings, trying to keep up with the bills. So many families are squeezed like ours, having to afford care for their aging parents and their own care or child care at the same time. But with support, we don't have to suffer to just be alive. If these programs are cut, if we see the kinds of proposals on Medicare and Medicaid that Congressman Price has put forward in the House, in the Budget Committee, people will face more catastrophes than ever before. You know, Mr. President, our new president campaigned on a promise not to cut Medicare and Medicaid. He said himself, quote, I'm not going to cut Social Security like every other Republican, and I'm not going to cut Medicare and Medicaid. But it doesn't square with the person he has nominated for this critical position, who will be making administrative decisions, as well as leading his efforts on health care. So actions speak louder than words. At least that's what we say in Michigan. Just this fall, Congressman Price said he expects Medicare to be overhauled. Overhauled within the first six to eight months of Trump's administration. He also believes the age of eligibility needs to increase, his words, and that, quote, the better solution is premium support. What does that mean? That's another word for voucher. Some people say privatization. But it's basically, instead of having an insurance card and a healthcare system where you can go to the doctor and know that you're covered with insurance, you'd get some kind of a voucher or an amount of money. And then you would be able to go find your own insurance, I guess, uh, or figure out a way to pay for your insurance. You know, before Medicare, seniors were trying to figure that out and couldn't find affordable insurance in the private market, which is why in 1965 Medicare was created. There is no way in the world I will support going backwards to that kind of approach. As chair of the Budget Committee, Congressman Price proposed a budget that would have cut Medicare by nearly $500 million, not counting what he wants to do with Medicaid, the majority of which goes to fund senior citizens in nursing homes. We need to have a secretary who supports making it easier and more affordable for people to get care, not less. Let's talk about health care for a moment in the broader sense. Uh, we know that more and more people, some 30 million people would be affected, their health insurance ripped away if the repeal was passed that has begun, the process has begun by Republicans in the House and the Senate. And the Affordable Care Act has provided health care and the opportunity for people to get care, for children to be able to see a doctor. There are parts of the country where we need more competition, where prices are too high. I want very much to work on that. 
I'm committed to working to make that system better, and we can do that without ripping the entire system apart. But there's also another part of the Affordable Care Act that affects every single person with insurance. Things that I know have made a tremendous difference to anybody with employer-based insurance. First of all, being allowed to have your child on your insurance to age 26. Secondly, knowing that if you get sick, you can't get dropped by your insurance company. And if you have a chronic disease, something's happened to your health, that you can't be blocked from getting insurance. But we also know things like making sure you can get all the cancer treatments your doctor says you need, not just those up to the cap that the insurance company will pay for. I've had pediatric cancer physicians tell me they have been able to save children's lives who have cancer because there is no longer a cap on the amount of care. Mental health and substance abuse services, where if they were covered at all before the Affordable Care Act, always cost more money. Higher co-pays, higher premiums. Now you can't do that. You have to have the same kinds of co-pays and the same kinds of premiums. So, so many patient protections that have basically said to insurance companies, you don't get just based on profits to decide what's going to happen, that when you buy insurance, you actually get health care. And that is something true for everyone today. And so we have a secretary who supports doing away with all that, changing all that, uh, who is not someone who is uh, interested in having uh, a basic set of services identified in healthcare, like maternity care. I've talked with him, questioned him at the Finance Committee. This was an area that I had championed when we passed the Affordable Care Act to make sure that, in fact, basic services for women were viewed as basic services in healthcare. And it starts with prenatal care and maternity care. And prior to the Affordable Care Act, it was very hard to find private insurance that covered maternity care unless you wanted to pay more. Some 70% of the plans out in the private market required women to pay more. So I asked Congressman Price, did he believe maternity care was a basic service and should be covered under basic insurance? And he said, well, women can purchase that if they need it, which is exactly what happened before, which is, no, it's not basic care, but you can purchase it on top of your regular premium if you need maternity care. So right now, the law says you can't discriminate and charge women more than men. And in fact, being a woman is no longer a pre-existing condition. But the person who the president has nominated for Health and Human Services would take us back there. And he would take us back there on a whole range of areas that create access for people to be able to have the care they need. Here's an example from a doctor in West Michigan who wrote me regarding just basic medical care for someone in need. He said, in December, a young man arrived in our emergency room with a badly mangled hand from a machining accident. He knew the hand was seriously injured and was willing to allow his coworker to bring him into the hospital so that it could be stitched up. When our physicians studied the wound, they knew he needed surgery to repair the bone and blood vessel damage. The patient refused, thinking the only thing he could possibly afford was stitches. They then connected this man with a financial services specialist who took a few minutes to find out that he was eligible for Medicaid. Working now because of the expansion, able to receive health care under Medicaid. He was then able to get the surgery that he needed. Beaumont physicians said that if the surgery hadn't happened, the man could have had an open wound for an indefinite amount of time, been prone to infection and possibly 
lost his hand entirely, making him unable to ever work at his job, or maybe any job, again. Expanding Medicaid health care to working people? Good idea. And millions of people have been impacted and have been able to get the care they need for themselves and for their children. Access to health care saved this man's arm and possibly his life. And that's really what is at stake here, both with this nominee and the larger debate on where we're going to go in our country, our great country, on the whole issue of health care. We all know that the Secretary of Health and Human Services advice will be a strong influence on the President's decision to promote, to sign, to veto legislation. We know he has the ability administratively to do a number of things, to cut off care, to cut off access to women's health care, to change the system that we have now, to destabilize it uh, so that the Affordable Care Act won't work. And I'm extremely concerned because of Congressman Price's record and his actual proposals and decisions and votes that he will be willing to actually do that. Whether it's cutting Medicare or Medicaid or removing some of the critical policies that keep people healthy and care affordable, I'm deeply concerned with the decisions that this nominee will make and the recommendations that he will make to the President of the United States. Again, we don't have to speculate about this. He's put these plans on paper. He's supported them. He's passed them. And it's very clear. We don't have to guess where he wants to go to dismantle Medicare as we know it, to gut Medicaid, most of which goes for seniors in nursing homes, and unravel, unravel the entire health care system and the patient protections that every American who has insurance has right now that allows them to get the health care that they're actually paying for. One other thing, Mr. President, that I need to raise because this is very serious, and that goes to serious issues surrounding conflicts of interest and likely ethics violations that relate to this nominee. There are a lot of unanswered questions and serious concerns related to Congressman Price's investments in healthcare and pharmaceutical companies. He frankly misled the finance and the help committees with answers to questions. And just the night before he was to have a confirmation Hearing in a vote, we learned from company officials that he got a privileged offer to buy stock at a discount. In other words, he got a special deal on healthcare stock. He told us he had not. They had paid fair market value, even though it was already an issue that he had purchased stock and then put legislation in related to uh, similar companies or the same companies involved. But then we found out that it was even worse because he got a special deal. We ask answers as Democrats. We did not want to move forward without asking congressmen to come back before us so we could ask questions about what he had said to the committee versus what the business that sold him the stock said afterwards. And unfortunately, that did not happen, requiring the Finance Committee to be in a situation where the rules ended up being broken, the nomination was forced through the committee without having bipartisan participation. I have a number of concerns related to the ethics and possibly legal violations of this nominee. On multiple occasions, he did purchase stock within days of introducing legislation that would have affected that company's bottom line and his investment. 
Despite multiple requests over several weeks, we still don't have the answers. And more importantly, the American people don't have the answers. For the person who will oversee health insurance, oversee Medicare, Medicaid, the entire system, someone who has invested and then helped the same companies, indicated he didn't get a special deal, and then now we have information that says otherwise. I think that's very concerning and should have been addressed before we were asked to vote on this particular nominee. Mr. President, there are a number of reasons. Policy, track record, questions that have been raised that I find extraordinary, uh, that they haven't been answered, and, and shocking that folks haven't felt they should be answered at this point. But for many, many reasons, it is my intention to vote no on behalf of the people in Michigan who care deeply about a strong, effective Medicare system, about making sure Medicaid's there for our children as well as our seniors in nursing homes, and for everyone who believes that in this great country, you ought to have the ability to see a doctor and get the medical care that you need for your child or yourself. Mr. President, I would yield the floor.